Hi there. What's up, y'all? I haven't posted a video in a long time. I'm really sorry about that. But uh, I live in Florida and I work in the restaurant business. And restaurants in Florida. Florida is an ex really seasonal area. It's tremendously dead for the vast majority of the year and then around November, December, January, especially February and March, it's tremendously just chaotic and hectic and you know, so anyway, blah blah blah, excuses, excuses, if for the few people <laughs> that have been following me, that have been waiting for me to complete this, I'm really sorry about that. However. I have exciting news as I fight my way through the Lizzies, and why we were fighting them on the subway, I have no idea because nowhere in the film or in the game were we fighting them on the subway, uh, but they're not hard to beat down. The Lizzies don't have a whole lot of health here. But the armies of the night here, this is, uh, you fight through everybody. And in the last level, you even get to fight the Rifts, the Gramercy Rifts, who you see all through the movie, but the Warriors never fight them. But you fight through all the gangs and all the bosses in this old Double Dragon style, you know what I mean? Moving left to right, it's extremely linear. And the boss here is Star, who's holding the gun who's shooting at you. And see, she's got some kicks and some pretty sweet fight moves. But, um, she has more health than everybody else. But I've got a little surprise coming up next. We got our income tax. Me and my wife, we have two children, so we got a pretty fat income tax. Come on, come on. <laughs> they don't jump on you unless you move further enough to the right. But the thing is that you don't want them surrounding you. You don't want them behind you and in front of you. You want to get them all on one side if you can. It's not always possible. But, again, you have all those credits at the bottom right corner of the screen. Once you run out of credits, this entire thing is over, and you have to start again from stage one. But again, I've got a surprise coming up next. It may be better, in, in a way it's better, and in a way it's, uh, it's worse. I'm not going to go into it. This is going to be the last I'm talking about it until the next video. But clearly, we're in Harlem right now, which means we're going to fight our way through the streets just like we did in the game. Now, we're in a, uh, we're in a disco. We're in a Harlem disco, which we've already been through before. This this little arcade game here that they threw in at the end, the last 4% of the game, it's so cool that they did this. In 1979, video games, it was a brand new thing, I mean there was Pong, Pong was the first. And uh, you know, whether you love it or hate it, you can't replace the first. It's like Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley was the very first white man to ever do rock and roll, to become huge. He was the first guy. He was the guy that brought it to the masses. Rock and roll is an old slang term. It's an old black slang term for sex. There was a DJ in the 50s. His name was Alan Freed. He is the guy who was credited with coming up the term, coming up with the term rock and roll. And again, it's an old black slang term for sex, which is what the original rock and roll scene 
is credited it was like putting sex to music and that's why it was so offensive and that's why Elvis when he was on the Ed Sullivan show was only shot from the waist up everybody thought it was offensive it just the overall sound and the visual imagery of Elvis Presley made all of the old people and teenagers, obviously, you know, like any band today, teenagers were in love with this, and then we were like, we don't want our children to be horrors, and blah, 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 blah. But it's the same thing. I, I mean, I don't know if you're, you know... <laughs> I've been drinking some Goldschlager, and I'm sucking on some Captain Morgan right now, so... Maybe this isn't making a whole lot of sense. This part right here, I don't even really want to try it. But the cool thing is is that you fight through all of the gangs, even the ones that you don't fight in the movie. Every gang that's in the film, you fight in this segment. And come on. Oh, we took Big Mo down. Oh, big thing right here. I didn't even get to show it to you. Unlike the actual level where your coach is, Sharp Dressed Man, you can grab him, you can do your power moves on him in this part right here alone. I mean, you can grab him and do power moves, which you can't do in the boss battle in that level. So now we're going through Spanish Harlem. This came out of Harlem, now we're going through Spanish Harlem. East Harlem. Look at how huge Big Mo's hat looks on Swan. That's very cool. Alright, there's one of those blue shirt motherfuckers. They all carry knives. They carry knives in the uh, Adios Amigo portion of the game, that level. And they carry knives right here too. So you gotta watch out. Does a lot of damage. Look how huge the guy's hat looks on this guy. Again, though, sorry it took so long to post this. There's actually two more stages of this, and then the game is complete. If all you want is 100%, this is what you, you have to beat this. You've got to go through this. It's the last 4% of the game. There's more to it. There's a pinball machine in the hangout. After you already have 100%, you can go in there. There's a thing called rumble mode, and every single... Avatar. Every pedestrian. Um, the part of the movie where you get on the subway and there are prom couples that come on. And you've just fought your way all the way across New York City. And they're beat. They're exhausted. I love the shot that they show of uh, Mercy's feet. It does a low angle and she's dirty. She's still wearing heels. But she, you know, it was a long night for these guys. They fought their way through every gang in New York City. But she looks dirty and trashy and, you know, it was a rough night. This prom, these two prom couples get on the subway and they're laughing and having fun and all that. And she kind of feels, you know, but anyway, those two prom couples, you know, she kind of feels like dirty and trashy, like, you know, they're better than her and she wants to impress them. And she doesn't need to impress her. And Swan shows her that. Where he puts his hand, she, like, starts, like, trying to fix her hair and he's like, don't. But those, those characters are even the game. You can fight with them. You fight with each other. It's not necessary for 100%, so I'm probably not going to show you that. It's not necessary. This is a 100% walkthrough. Here we go, Vargas. Diego, we just ran past. And he was behind the bar, and he's throwing bottles at you like all of those irritating fucking bartenders. And the rest, wow, that didn't take long. I don't know, I was here running my mouth. Okay, anyway, this is the end. I will see you next time. Got a surprise next time. Later.